Fantastic. And now I promise next two fantastic points. We'll start with very special conversation with very special guest. And after that, I want to invite you for a very special surprise for everybody. But surprise is a secret now. But be patient and wait for this surprise after the end of our conversation. Uh, the conversation will be about comedian in politics, very provocative um, question maybe. Uh, Rick Javik as a president for Ukraine. And really, in the last years, we can observe new phenomenon because we have a people who are uh, actors, comedians, um, writers, and they decided to make political career. Uh, our guest was a pioneer on this way, but it's necessary to mention such person like Beppe Grillo in Italy with the movement Five Stars, or of course, new elected president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. And uh, before I invite my special guest, I want to say that when Grillo had first time good result in the parliamentary election, was a question, how is it possible to, for a comedian to have such result in such experienced democracy like Italian democracy? And I remember the words of famous politician and long-time member of European Parliament, Professor Butiglione. He was asked, why the comedian can be politician now? And he said, why not? So many years the politician tried to be comedians. Why the comedian one day cannot be politician? And that's his... Uh, a very, very good, I think, explanation of, of this situation. But uh, I'm very honored to invite on the stage the man who was first on this list of, of comedians decided to make politics and to be a part of politics. Jan Gnar from Iceland, from Reykjavik, welcome. And applause. So, and my first question is, uh, please tell us, uh, because uh, before uh, politics, uh, you were a very famous and popular comedian, author, you are, uh, you, uh, uh, out is, uh, you are author of uh, two famous movies, The Iceland Dream and The Four Men Like Me. And uh, my question is, what was your motivation to change this popularity? this job and go to the politics which is normally not so popular well i create some problems uh, I, at the time in 2009 i was uh, i was working in uh, in the reykjavik uh, city theater i was a playwright mm -hmm. and i was supposed to uh, write a play and this was right after the financial crisis when everything collapsed and uh, and of course i was supposed to write a play about the crisis, about politics and about the media and about the financial people and, uh, and uh, but then it occurred to me elections were coming up and it occurred to me how about instead of taking you know politics and the financial sector and the media onto the stage, how about taking theater to them? That was my idea. And, uh, and uh, I, my plan was to, to make a spectacle. I wanted to make a spectacle, like a surrealist spectacle. And, uh, and one thing led to another. <laughs> And, you know, I started my political party, I involved some, some people, and, uh, and, and... And you name your party with a very modest name, the best party. Yeah, the so best... You, the you, you, it was also the part of performance still, or... Yes. Or it was your belief that it will be the best party? No, more uh, like there is no such thing as the best party, and therefore we can be mm -hmm. the best party. And, 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 and it was, you know, it sounded silly enough. I wanted it to sound like really silly. And I, early on I decided, you know, uh, I could promise anything because uh, I promised I would break all my promises anyway. So, 
So I just went about and I asked people, what do you want? What do you want me to promise you? And they said, well, I would like, you know, Disneyland in Iceland. Yep, vote for me and you will get a Disneyland. And you did it? No. No. Absolutely not. And I told people, and you're, you're, you are aware that I'm going to break all my promises. Yes, yes, absolutely. But okay, that, that, that's that's interesting explanation of your motivation. But how to explain the people who decided to vote for you? The man who is not interested about promises, to fulfill the promises. And yeah. what, I understand it was connected with the atmosphere of the crisis, or not? Yeah, I mean, of course it was. Uh, uh, people were uh, deeply, everybody in Iceland was deeply affected mm. by the, the crisis. And uh, uh, I don't know, people were just hoping for something new, like a new start, something to, uh, uh, to believe in, looking for something believe, to believe in, because uh, many people had yeah, lost hope. In, uh, in the contemporary, in, in, the, in the established political parties. So, uh, I don't know. And, and like, why, why should they not have voted for me? Why not? If you don't know until now, or you, you have some more serious explanation today, after so many years? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Good guy, of course, you know, yes. Uh, uh, and at least I'm, you know, I'm funny. Sometimes I can be funny. So why not vote for me? Okay. And so then tell me, one day you are elected, you won the election, and how much your life changed? Uh, because it was not no longer such drama, theater, schizophrenic, mm. you know, situation. You it, were seriously mayor of the capital of the of the country yeah and how much your life changed and how much you changed your mind how it completely changed completely. I mean it completely changed uh, everything and I wasn't I, I wasn't really prepared for it because uh, the whole campaign and the idea about the party was uh, uh, was me having fun I really enjoyed it and uh, and but after the elections, everything really, really changed. <laughs> and, I can. And I mean, I, I, it kind of. I, I have compared it like you know, uh, to to sex, yeah. like to to uh, to have sex. And did you invite to the for, for the cooperation some professional people or some experienced people or or friends, colleagues? What was your team? Uh, in my party. No, it in was your party in, 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 in the city hall as well. Yeah, I mean, it was mostly people I contacted through Facebook. Uh -huh. And, uh, and I, I just asked them, can I use your name? When, when, because I need, you know, names on a ballot to be allowed to run in the elections. And, and no, nobody of us had any prior experience with politics whatsoever. We were all artists, uh, writers, comedians, musicians, and, uh, but yeah, and I remember, and I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't even almost understand what I was getting myself into. Mm -hmm. uh, really? Because it, I was having the time of my life, I was having so much fun. And, uh, and when it was clear that I was to become the next mayor of Reykjavik, I got a phone call from this woman in City Hall, who is uh, who was, uh, like uh, executive, like chief of staff. Yes. And she congratulated me and she invited me even though I hadn't been inaugurated into office, she invited me to come down to City Hall and, and look at my office. And I remember this phone call. It's like, like, look at my office. And I imagined like an office. It's like a room with a desk and a phone and a computer. And that's how I imagined the office. And I told her, no, it's not necessary. I've, I've seen... <laughs> offices 
I don't need to. And she said, oh, okay, but uh, I know everybody here is very excited to meet you. And that's the first time I thought, okay, so are there more people in the office? So I went down there the day after, and that's when I realized it's over 100 people who work in the mayor's office. You were I had no idea. Okay. I, <laughs> Yeah, it's a great explanation. But then you've been four years the mayor of the city. Sorry? Then you've been four years the mayor of the city. And yeah. you did something, I've... you know, such, let's say, normal job, bureaucracy. Yes. Boring things. Yeah, and I... I... What, what is your impression after the years? It was good time for, for you and it was good time for the city or...? It was both a good time for... It was the best of times and it was the worst of times. <laughs> Uh, it was a good time for me, and it was a good time for the city, and it was exceptional. I mean, it was an exceptional experience for me as a, as a writer, uh, an artist, uh, to get this time to, uh, to work in, in, in uh, administration, absolutely. Uh, and I got to be part of so many very, very important things. But at the same time, I... I missed my old life. Uh, and then you, <laughs> you decided to finish. But before that, during your, your time um, as a mayor, uh, what was your understanding of the politics? Because I you changed this, this approach, I, I guess. Yeah. I, well, I, 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 like many people, I had uh, you know, prejudices against politicians. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I would, you know, I would generalize about politicians. Politicians are like this and like that and so on. And, uh, but when I became one of them, I realized politicians are just people like you and me. They're just like teachers. I, I know it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I think it was very beneficial for me for, to be, you know, my, my experience as comedian and uh, I used my comedy a lot in my work, and uh, and uh, yeah, and I encourage politi uh, comedians to to go into politics and try it. And then during these four years, what was your main goal, and what about what you are pr proud now that you achieved during your time as a politician? The main achievement. I managed to help put Reykjavik back on its feet after the collapse. I made, I made budgets, I made budgets for the city, like annual budgets, and, uh, and that was really, really difficult, and it, it demanded a lot of uh, responsibility and, and boring things, you know. But, uh, but, the, but the job was much more funny or boring? Sorry? The job was more funny or boring? Uh, both. both. I mean, I mean, it was a, it's, it's a lot of responsibility, and uh, but at the same time, I got to you know, do uh, to work on very important issues and things that really matter, and uh, for the long term, and uh, you know, I. I, 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 um, we, we, we put in place a master plan for the city, mm -hmm. which is, you know, being executed now. You know, they're working according to the master plan that we designed. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, I, I would say the first year was sheer terror. Uh, second, years were, second year was bearable, and the second, the last two years were fun, most of it. Okay. So, yeah. And what was your style of communication with the people of Reykjavik? Communic how you communicate during your job uh, as a mayor? You changed this old style of communication, or it was more or less the same what well, your predecessor were doing? I, I really tried to, to keep a direct uh, contact with people. I would meet people in in public meetings, and also, I, I I was about the first, probably among the first politicians in in Iceland to actively use social media. 
I would, I would interact with people on Facebook mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, you know, and, and, and people would comment and I would, you know, reply to comments even. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah. Well, and I understand that if you, don't, if you didn't promise nothing, that is better because then you were not obliged to deliver absolutely, something. That is absolutely. a great idea for the politicians. Yeah. No promises at all. But I have a different question. And during these four years, did you lie sometimes? Lie? Lie. Because this is a problem of, well, of it, politics. It, that it, is this Machiavelli's... Yeah. Well, it depends on how you define a lie. Okay, please, 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 please define <laughs> lie in your sense. When you, you mean like... I tell you, you, I have the definition, you know, that many times the politician, they say, no, I don't lie. That is only wishful thinking. <laughs> so, but uh, lie is a lie. It's happened yeah. sometimes or never? Uh, no, honestly, I don't recall ever lying. But sometimes I would avoid telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good definition. Okay. But not directly lying. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. No, because one of the main criticisms against this so called mainstream establishment or establishment is that all of them, mainly they are liars, you know, and, uh, yeah, and, yeah. That's, and the, pe the feeling of the people is that, uh, well, it's not important that what these people are speaking because finally they will lie. So, yes, yeah. You had different style. No, I, I don't think I ever lied. Uh, I consider myself to be a really honest person. Yeah. You know, okay. I, I don't. But it's kind of like you know, with uh, you know, raising children. You know, you don't lie to them, okay. but you not don't necessarily always tell them the exact truth. <laughs> okay, exactly. <exactly. laughs> and then after four years, you decided to finish. Yes. And why? Yes. Uh, it was enough, or it was? It was. It was enough. Okay. I. I. I, uh, I did my thing, and uh, and I also just, you know, I missed my creative life, mm -hmm. and that was something uh, that uh, uh, that I had difficulty doing, you know, as mayor to be, you know, in the creative mindset, so to speak, you know. Uh, and we have very limited time, so the last question may be crucial for this evening. What would be your advice to President Zelensky? Because he has a familiar background. He is a president of a big, important country. Yeah. What is your most important advice to him? I would, my advice to him would be to take good care of himself. Good. Uh, uh, eat well and rest well and accept, especially take care of sleep. And I think that's uh, a big mistake that uh, people do, is to forget to sleep, you know, uh, because there is so much to do and there's so much pressure and so much responsibility and so on. And, uh, and to people uh, uh, in uh, regarding comedians, uh, uh, comedians are not lunatics <laughs> okay comedians are usually quite clever capable people and and just because you know something is funny just because i'm funny does not mean i'm not serious of and uh, yeah uh, that is a big difference and yeah. you have some contacts with politics now last question and short answer please yeah i keep con i keep uh, in contact with uh, my fellow politicians people i used to uh, to work with, and, but I've, I'm, I'm, I'm not directly involved in politics anymore. Okay. Only. So, thank you very much. It was very, very interesting. Jon Gnar, former mayor of Reykjavik, all the best for you. You too. Thank you.